So again, looking at vessels on a plastic model, this time an upper limb model, looking at the axilla, here we've got the axillary artery. We can't see any subclavian artery on this model. It's uh, further uh, in a proximal direction there. And don't forget that the axillary artery is going to end at the distal border here of teres major. So these red bits that you can see in between the nerves uh, are meant to indicate that this is now the brachial artery. And if we follow the where the brachial artery runs, we can actually see it clearly down here. So the, the space on this model that the brachial artery can be clearly identified is just here next to the median nerve, just before we get to the cubital fossa. So that's axillary and brachial. We can spot a couple of other vessels here. The first one is not, I don't think it shows up amazingly clearly on the, on the screen, sorry about that. But the first one is travelling with the axillary nerve. Now the axillary nerve is here, you can see that, it's nice bright yellow, so you can see that pretty clearly. That goes into a little quadrangular space here, uh, and then travels around the surgical neck of the humerus. Now travelling with that, there is an artery in here, which is the posterior circumflex humeral artery. And please accept my apologies, I don't think it shows up really well on the screen. But if you're looking at one of these models, and you've got it physically in front of you, you can see it pretty clearly there. But the good news is, there is another place where we can see that vessel. So if we turn this model over, and we just gently remove the deltoid, we can see that other side of the quadrangular space, and we can see, uh, again, the axillary nerve in yellow, and then the posterior circumflex humeral artery wrapping around the surgical neck of the humerus there. Now, on a specimen, it may be possible to see the anterior circumflex humeral artery. It's not on this model. Um, and it, it, in theory, is going to anastomose with the posterior circumflex humeral artery around the surgical neck. It's a lot smaller than the posterior circumflex. So it doesn't come as far around the neck. You can see that the posterior one comes a long way around the surgical neck there, or at least the branches of it do. With the anterior circumflex humeral, it usually comes off the axillary just a little bit superior to where the uh, posterior one does, so about here somewhere, and then it just heads straight down this way and disappears, goes towards the humerus and wraps around the anterior aspect of the surgical neck. It may be possible to see it on a specimen. Remember that it's quite a bit smaller than the posterior circumflex humeral. Now the other one that we can then see on this model, the other artery, is the deep brachial artery. Now this one is travelling with the radial nerve. So here's the radial nerve here disappearing into the triceps brachii. And here is the deep brachial artery travelling with it. Now the radial nerve is the largest branch of the brachial plexus, so it's big. It's the biggest nerve that you'll see in this region. And the deep brachial artery is, is tiny compared to the nerve. So just bear that in mind, it's only going to be small. On a specimen, the radial nerve will tend to be lying in here, so you'll see lots of the radial nerve. It won't necessarily be on an angle like this. So the radial nerve will tend to be more vertically oriented here. And the blood vessel, though, the deep brachial artery, does tend to come off the uh, axillary and head down on a different angle to the nerve. So here they're showing them as travelling together here, but like it's just as likely as not on a specimen that the nerve will be running kind of almost vertically and the artery will be running at an angle to that obliquely and coming to join the nerve as it disappears into the muscle. So don't expect it's necessarily going to look like it does here on this model. Okay, so those are the vessels that we can actually see here on this model, but just to point out where some of the uh, veins will be on a specimen, um, what we'd have is we, we spotted the brachial artery down here and we, and we know that it's here traveling with these, uh, the median and ulnar nerves here. So the brachial veins, and there's usually two, but there can be one or three reasonably commonly, um, but the brachial veins often will be traveling or should be traveling either side of that brachial artery. So they'll be res relatively deep and, and traveling with this artery, okay? Um, Whereas the basilic vein, 
he's still travelling in, in the same sort of groove between the, the bicep and tricep here, but it tends to be a more superficial structure and be often larger in diameter than the brachial veins. But the, but the way to tell for sure which one's a brachial and, and which one is the uh, basilic, assuming that they're all present, is that the basilic vein is superficial here in the forearm. So the basilic vein will be running up this medial aspect of the forearm and then will continue along the arm. So if there's a structure pinned here and it's a vein, make sure you have a look at the forearm and just see where the vein that's pinned here originated. If it's superficial and it's running along this medial aspect of the forearm, then that's the basilic vein. If it's travelling with the brachial artery and it arose from the radial and ulnar uh, veins that are travelling with the radial and ulnar arteries, then it's a brachial vein. And you can use a, a similar kind of thing. Actually, it's, pretty, it's a bit simpler on the lateral aspect. On the lateral aspect of the forearm, we have a superficial vein here called the cephalic vein. And then it just carries on up the lateral aspect of the arm, being the cephalic vein, and then travels in the deltopectoral groove, goes under the clavicle to join the subclavian vein. So the cephalic vein just travels all the way laterally up the forearm and arm. Uh, but then what happens is there's a little communicating branch that joins the um, cephalic and basilic veins here. Actually, sorry, it usually runs across this way. And so what we've got is the, a median cubital vein, and it just runs straight across here between the, the cephalic and basilic veins. And that's often a vein that if, if someone is giving blood or having a blood test, that's often the most prominent um, superficial vein and the easiest one to take blood from. 